what's your perfect day? You could do anything you want. What is it? And I challenged this, this actually, this female photographer. I said, what's your perfect day? She says, well, what do you mean? I said, well, if you could do anything, what would it be? She goes, well, what, what do you mean? I said, well, this Saturday, and if you had no weddings to shoot, what would you do? Well, I'd wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. I said, 6 in the morning on your perfect day? Really? I said, no, let's, if you could do anything. She goes, oh, I'd sleep in. I go, to what time? She goes, 10. She started describing her perfect day. And I said to her, so when's the last time you've had your perfect day? She thinks, she looks. She starts bawling profusely. She was weeping, sobbing. She says, I can't remember. I can't remember. I have no idea. with photography at the age of 15, did it all, the, all, the, all high school, finished high school. I would like wake up at three in the morning and just walk out in the fog and shoot anything and everything inside. Then I thought, I'm going to start shooting for someone. So I approached a very prominent studio at the time and knocked on the door, walked in, I said, hey, I'm Jerry, I love photography, I'd love to assist you and I don't want to get paid, just I want to hold bags. So I carried bags for about a, two years. And finally, I got my first uh, coverage. Like, hey, you can, you can do the cutting of the cake at this wedding. I did that well. And then it was like, well, you can do a groom's coverage. I did that well. Then you can do the bride's coverage. Then you can do the full reception. And then once I got to a point where I did all those elements pretty well, the photographer that I used to work for, he said, well, here's a little Aussie wedding. It means it's a really easy wedding. So literally at the age of 20, I started shooting professionally. That's what's missing in today's generation, wouldn't you agree? We all say, I want to be a professional photographer, so I'll start my own business, which is the biggest mistake you made. If you want to be a business owner and you want to make money, that's when you start a business. And my first year, I shot 25 weddings. In my second year, I shot 50 weddings. And in my third year, I shot 100 weddings. I doubled my prices, I shot 100 weddings a year again. But here's the thing, I had to work every night, literally, because if you shot 100 weddings a year, you've got 100 plus inquiries, 100 pre-wedding meetings, 100 bookings, 100 album plans, pickups. And this is the old days of film. I built it to a 300 a year wedding business, 15 employees. I did it for 10 years and I loved the challenge of it, I loved it. But I got to the point where I didn't want to be there anymore. And you know what was lost? My innocence. In the sense that my beautiful hobby turned into this business, so I, I didn't have that joy that I actually once had. So part of my decision to actually sell the big company, Excite, was to actually simplify my life. And we blur the line between looking after our families and looking after our businesses, which makes us money, which gives us choices, which helps our lifestyle. This is the problem with us photographers. You know what we do? We get obsessed with this business. We get obsessed with creating. We get obsessed with blogging. We click that mouse a few thousand times a day. We work all night and we forget why we're working. We spend our time immortalizing moments for other families and we don't actually appreciate our own. So I think what's missing in today's generation of photographers, they may be obsessed, but I think for some reason they're obsessed with notoriety. They want everyone to know who they are. Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, and they think that success is getting 200 likes on an image. And I look back over all the years and I said to myself, you know what, putting my business first is not really always putting my family first. If you can learn from my experiences, and I'm sure you have many of your own, I'm saying to you is do not use what you do for a living to sabotage your happiness. I want you to use what you do for a living to protect it. We put a date in our happiness. As in, if I say, oh, how are you? You know what many people say? Oh, I'm getting there. Where's there? I'll be happy when I do 50 weddings and I can quit my day job and I can do my weddings. I'll be happy when I buy that boat. I'll be happy when I go to Africa. I'll be happy when I buy this. I'll be happy when I do that. Not realizing that in a year, it'll be today. How many Twitter followers I got? How many people like my photograph? How many people poke me? Is a bonus 
but it means nothing without being happy at home. Wouldn't you agree? Melissa, she started distributing my products in, in the US. And my former wife and Melissa were very good friends. And they were Skyping each other and so on. And, and Georgina says to Melissa, are you sitting down? I've got something to tell you. Melissa says, are you sitting down? I've got something to tell you. We broke up on the exact same day. He broke up with Melissa. I broke up with my former wife from different parts of the world. And we both had to experience a big sense of loss. No matter what it is, you're with someone for so many years. And if it's not working, it's, it's, it's very sad. So there we are at dinner for the first time properly when we finally exhale after all the madness. And I look at Melissa and I say, can you believe we're both single? Who are you going to end up with? So Melissa is just describing her perfect man. And in my usual humorous sort of self, I said, sounds a lot like me. She went red. She finally composes herself and she looks at me and she says, Who's your perfect woman? I looked at her and I described every part of her physically. I described every part of her emotionally, mentally, and that was it. Whether you believe in God, Buddha, karma, destiny, whatever it may be, all I know is, at least in my experience, you get what you deserve in this life. And I believe that she was a gift that was given to me for all the hard years of being a good guy. I found love and it was the most exhilarating thing I've ever felt in my life. I didn't have to think. Someone finally loved me for who I was. Literally within about six months I proposed and we got married only a, you know, a few months later. I feel like I was given this gift but perhaps I was a gift to her as well because of what she had gone through. Very similar story to mine. I am a lucky bastard. I'm the happiest that I've ever been. And I'm going to protect it like a fierce animal. So my advice to you is how many perfect days with your loved ones are you going to have before you leave this earth? How many perfect days are you going to offer to someone else? Enjoy what you do for a living, but use it to support and to protect what you have, not to sabotage it. That's the main message. Thank you. I wanna make you laugh Scratch your back I wanna hold up your arms Make you feel like that I wanna rock your boat I wanna let you know Something's come over me Something's come over me. Oh.